My name is Alex Hacopian. I'm a cataract refractive surgeon in Houston, Texas. I've been at Man Eye Institute for about a year and a half now, and we try to focus our practice on refractive cataract surgery, LASIK. So the implementation of as many different eyewall technologies for us, trying to be kind of cutting edge practice, always using the clear view as part of that kind of algorithm. The Clearview 3 is a great lens in terms of its uh, variability in the sizing. I like the quarter increment diopter powers that we have with the biometry and the ocular surface management that we're trying to do to try to get these perfect outcomes for patients. Having that ability to dial in the prescription even more has been beneficial in terms of our outcomes. And I like the absence of those concentric rings, which definitely cuts down on those positive dysphotopsies that patients are experiencing with other traditional diffractive trifocal IOLs, while still not compromising that excellent near vision that our patients are kind of craving more and more. So we know that that near vision is going to be there, and that's almost always on point. J1 plus is what our patients are pretty routinely achieving. And so what I was worried about was potentially there not being as much intermediate, but in the exam rooms, I'll give them the intermediate card and they'll surprisingly be able to read everything pretty clearly without any drop off in that acuity from the distance to the intermediate and to the near. So for it to be a bifocal lens, but still give them that intermediate vision has really been impressive for us. When we're doing younger patients' RLEs, they may still have some ability to accommodate, and so their near vision may not be what they expect it to be with traditional trifocal IOLs. So in these younger patients that are getting RLEs, I love using a clear view because they still get that great near vision and they get that uncompromised distance vision. I would say what I like about it too is it's not diffractive, and so the absence of those rings helps in our retina colleagues when we're working with patients that maybe have some posterior pathology that need to be worked on later. I think it's beneficial when we're sharing care with other doctors that the lens is easy to see through from an examination and treatment standpoint as well. In our practice, we have not experienced any PCO in the six months that I've started implanting them. And we see the patients back one month, three months, six months after cataract surgery, and the vision's not fallen off yet. So I think it's important surgeons to polish the posterior capsule, clean off the lens epithelial cells on the anterior capsule, and thus the design of the lens is going to do what it does to prevent that PCO to occur. So it's been a clear lens, it's stayed clear for us in the six months that we've had it, and the patients have been extremely satisfied. So the way I go about counseling patients when it comes to premium IOL selection, it's difficult because we're only meeting them for 10 minutes and then you're making this life-changing decision with them on what the quality of their vision is. And I don't remember what doctor said it, but your eyes are the only thing that you're using every waking minute that you're alive. And so that they have a new lens in there that's not what they're used to, it's important for us to counsel them. So I try to get a sense of if they like to drive at night, then I know that anything with those rings is probably going to be bothersome for them. And I try to understand what that near point is. People with maybe longer arms may have a near point that they're comfortable reading at that's further out than somebody who has a smaller frame. And so looking at that kind of body habitus is important. The learning curve was very short. Patients were seeing excellently day one and they were really happy with their vision. And so from there, it really took off in our practice. And then slowly the other surgeons would see these results, hear what the optometrists that we co-manage with were saying, and they were starting to incorporate it as well. So once I get the cortex out, then we use a 27 gauge uh, cannula that has a silicone tip on it. And I use that to polish off the posterior capsule to get any remnant lens epithelial fibers. And then we'll put the cohesive viscoelastic in to inflate the bag. And then we have this modified uh, spatula that's rounded on the bottom and then has a bit of an edge on the top. And we use that to clean off the anterior capsule lens epithelial cells. So the bag is pretty pristine prior to injection of the lens. And then when the scrub tech hands us the lens, it's really easy for them to load. And we use a second instrument to maybe seat the IOL injector into the wound if we're using a 2.4. And I've had experience getting it in 
pretty smoothly through a 2.4, but occasionally I'll still take my keratome after the bag's been inflated again and just barely try to increase the width of the incision. And then that allows me to seat the injector inside the anterior chamber, and then I can deliver the lens into the bag. And then I'll use a second instrument to help dial in that plate haptic on the trailing edge into the bag. And then based on the Purkinje light reflexes, I try to orient it so that at least a couple of those three light images are in the distance portion. And that has, for us, really resulted in great distance vision without any kind of um, myopic shift or anything. LensTech has been really good about helping us with our ILL calculations, either be it a post-myopic refraction that we've done, which we had good success, or any cases that we have interesting Ks. A rod has been great with helping us and making sure we hit our targets. I think the future of IOLs is going to focus on image quality and patients not wanting to sacrifice near vision for image quality or vice versa. And so the Clearview has been great at keeping that refractive IOL technology and having great quality of vision while also having great near vision as well. That and accommodative IOLs I think would be the next frontier that we have to master in terms of trying to replicate the natural crystalline lens.